What's going on today? Uh, this is David again. Just coming to bring you another video. Um, this video is going to be called The Incense and the Anointing Oils. Um, the importance of them and what that really means. Um, why you would see it in the tabernacle and the holy place. Um, the root of it is Cain and Abel and what took place between them. And also, uh, that's where you would find the understanding. The, the the situation between Cain and Abel. And those customs were carried down through man. So that's why the Israelites would use these specific incense, these oils, um, to burn in the holy place. And uh, just going to give you understanding about that. Uh, first and foremost, to give all praises to the Most High God, Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, and all praises to you, lost sheep, the house of Israel, you so called blacks, native indigenous Indians so-called Hispanics of native indigenous and Negro descent by the house of your fathers, um, the confusion of face, uh, Pacific Islanders scattered abroad, and uh, the Gentiles up here, God, and, and hearken to the righteousness of the Heavenly Father, uh, who, all who are willing and obedient. Uh, all praises to you. And uh, we're going to get into this, man. Incense and anointing oils. Um, you're going to learn a lot of things that you must know the story from the beginning. You cannot be cleansed you cannot be baptized unless you are baptized in these waters, which is a story from the beginning. So you can understand exactly what you're seeing on the earth and what's happening right now. Um, it is very important that you understand what's happening right now. You can only find that um, if you study the book from the beginning. Um, then you're not going to believe that. I'm going to keep proving it um, because I know it's accurate. So um, you can't understand a lot of things. The Lord tells you in Isaiah 46, teaching the end from the beginning. Teaching the end from the beginning. Um, most people, it's just not given to them. Okay? But this is, a, this is just going to be a nice video um, concerning incense and anointing oils. Uh, just give you some more understanding. I think we talked about the menorah a little bit in there, too. I think. I just can't remember right now. I think it'll come across if I read these chapters. Um, yeah. I hope you enjoy it. Um, definitely want to take a look at it and just listen to it. Um, it's talked about in scripture. It's talked about with Solomon. I think I did the song with Solomon and uh, talk about his smell, the Lord's smell. It has to do with heaven. Uh, Jeremiah talks about it. Um, it has to do with heaven, but it has to do with the blood of Abel. So let's get into it, man. Uh, incense and anointing oils. Uh, Cain and Abel, uh, the, the murder of, of Abel, let's read, book of Adam and Eve, chapter 76, verses 1 through 12, and the children began to wax stronger and to grow in stature, but Cain was hard-hearted and ruled over his younger brother, right, he liked to rule over his young. he's like a bully, let's read, and oftentimes when his father made an offering, he will remain behind and I'll go with him to offer up. So Cain doesn't really want to deal with the Lord. But as to Abel, he had a meek heart and was obedient to his father and mother, Adam and Eve, whom he often moved to make an offering because he loved it and prayed and fasted much. Right. So he would he would encourage Adam and Eve, let's go do an offering. Because he loved the word of God. He loved God. Willingly. Then came this sign to Abel as he was coming into the cave of treasures and saw the golden rods, the incense, and the myrrh. Right. A sign came to Abel because he's a willing heart towards God. He was given the treasure. Let's read. Saw the golden rods, the incense, and the myrrh. He inquired of the, he inquired of. He inquired of his parents, Adam and Eve, concerning them and said unto them, how did you come by these? Right. So he wants to know what this means. Then Adam told him all that had befallen him, befallen them. And Abel felt deeply about what his father told him. Right. So he's thinking deep about what, what his dad is telling him, what God did, why they're in the cave of treasures, what happened to them. Uh, Abel is a willing and obedient to the man of God who is Adam. 
He's willing and obedient to the Father and the Son. He's a willing, obedient spirit, pure, righteous, his heart. This is before um, being issued laws, commandments, okay? He's a willing spirit towards God. He's from the Father. Let's read. Furthermore, his father Adam told him of the works of God and of the garden, right? So, you know, he knows about the garden. He's getting the doctrine from the beginning. And after that, he remained behind his father the whole that night in the cave of treasures, right? He's studying all night long from the man of God, just like Solomon in the Song of Solomon. That's right. And that night while he was praying, Satan appeared unto him under the figure of a man who said to him, Thou hast oft times moved thy father to make an offering, to fast, and to pray, therefore, I will kill thee and make thee perish from this world. Right. Satan does not like you if you worship the God and worship the Lord in truth with a willing heart. He's weak, he threatens you with death. But as for Abel, he prayed to God and drove away Satan from him, and believed not the words of the devil. Then when it was day, an angel of God appeared unto him, who said to him, Shorten neither fasting, prayer, nor offering up an oblation unto thy God. For lo, the Lord has accepted thy prayer. Be not afraid of the figure which appeared unto thee in the night, and who cursed thee unto death. And the angel departed from him. Right. Be comfortable in your righteousness, Abel. Don't worry about those who are threatening your life with death. Be comfortable with it. The Lord has accepted your offering. That's all that matters, Abel. Notice he didn't tell me he was not going to die. That's what people need to understand. The men of the Lord are called with death. It's part of the journey. Let's read. That when it was day, Abel came to Adam and Eve and told them of the vision he had seen. But when they heard it, they grieved much over it, over it, yet said nothing to him about it. They only comforted him. That's right. They didn't tell him what that meant. They only comforted him. They know what's going to happen. Because they know his spirit. Right? Adam is a man of God. They only comforted him. The comforter gave him the word. Let's read. But as to hard-hearted Cain, Satan came to him by night, showed himself and said unto him, Since Adam and Eve loved thy brother Abel much more than they love thee, and wish to join him in marriage to thy beautiful sister, because they love him, but wish to join thee in marriage to his ill-favored sister, because they hate thee. Now therefore I counsel thee, when they do that, to kill thy brother. Then thy sister will be left for thee, and his sister will be cast away. And Satan departed from him. But the wicked one remained behind in the heart of Cain, who sought many a time to kill his brother. That's right. That's why you don't listen to gossipers, because that isn't what the council was about. Satan lied to him. Right? You've been deceived by Satan when you listen to gossipers. If you're not dealing with someone directly, you know, said so these are the foundation of understanding for the laws that we were given. Okay? You don't listen to gossipers. That's the spirit of Satan. He didn't go to his parents. But hard-hearted Cain hearkened to Satan because he wants many times to kill his brother. He's a murderer. Let's read. Never trust Cain. Never turn your back on Cain. Never listen to Cain. The wicked. But when Adam saw that the elder brother hated the younger, he endeavored often to soften their hearts and said unto Cain, Take, O my son, of the fruits of thy sowing, and make an offering unto God that he may forgive thee thy wickedness and thy sin. Right. Adam knows what's up. Let's read. He said also to Abel, Take thou of thy sowing and make an offering and bring it to God, that he may forgive thee thy wickedness and thy sin. That's right. Then Abel hearkened unto his father's voice, took of his sowing and made a good offering, and said to his father Adam, Come with me to show me how to offer it up. Right. Go to Adam. He has to go to man to learn how to get good with God. Abel is righteous and obedient. That goes to all people on the earth. You have to listen to man. That's the only way you get in. Let's read. And they went, Adam and Eve, with him, 
and showed him how to offer up his gift upon the altar. Then after that, they stood up and prayed that God would accept Abel's offering. Then God looked upon Abel and accepted his offering. Then God looked upon Abel and accepted his offering. The man first, offering second. Let's read. And God was more pleased with Abel than with his offering. Because of his good heart and pure body, there was no trace of guile in him. Right. Good heart, good body. Right. Um, he is a virgin. He has a pure heart towards God. He's obedient. He hearkens to his mother and father who are of the righteousness of the Lord, who have the treasure. That's who the, their son is supposed to listen to. And that's what's destroyed our family circles. We don't have that in the so-called black communities. I was taken, it's part of the curses. You can't go to your mother or your father and get this treasure. You're hearkening to Cain in his schools. That's right. Let's read. Then they came down from the altar and went to the cave in which they dwelt. But Abel, by reason of his joy at make, having made his offering, repeated it three times a week after the example of his father Adam. That's right. See a good, righteous son from the light. We don't have those examples in our communities, blacks, Hispanics, everywhere. You're going to Sunday school, which was beat into you by Cain. You're going to their schools on Monday, which was beat into you by Cain. He's a hater of all good. But as to Cain, he took no pleasure in offering. But after much anger on his father's part, he offered up his gift once. Right. He, Adam had to be angry with him to do it. He's not willing. Offered up his gift once. And when he did offer up, his eye was on the offering he made. Right. He still cares about it. The carnality of the world. He's not obedient, and his heart is with things, not God. And he took the smallest of his sheep for an offering, and his eye was again on it. Right, so not only did he, <laughs> he Cain is only concerned about his own greed, wickedness, right? Never trust those who are under the spirit of Satan. They give you the crumbs. You're willing to give them the abundance. They want to give you the crumbs back, right? That's Satan. He's still hard. He gives them the small sheep. Therefore, God did not accept his offering because his heart was full of murderous thoughts. Right. People who love things, they'll kill you for them. They'll deceive you with gossip. They'll kill you for them. Money. That's right. And that's all. And they all thus lived together in the cave in which Adam and Eve had brought forth until Cain was 15 years old and Abel 12 years old. That's right. Mm -hmm. Cain is a murderer from the beginning. Before he even murdered, the Lord already knows he's a murderer. Never trust those like Cain. Proverbs chapter 15, verses 8 through 10. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. But the prayer of the upright is his delight. Notice how... He looked at Abel first, then his offering. The way of the wicked is an abomination unto the Lord, but he loveth him that followeth after righteousness. Right? Abel hearkening to Adam was righteousness. Cornelius hearkening to Peter was righteousness. The Israelites hearkening to the voice, the man of God, was righteousness. If you're doing any other way, it's an abomination. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. Right. Cain didn't want to listen to Adam. And he that hateth reproof shall die. That's right. You don't want to be you don't want to be told you're going to run into peril. You're going to lose your life. That's right. Let's keep going. Mm -hmm. That was chapter 77. This is chapter 78. Then Adam said to Eve, behold, the children are grown up. We must think of finding wives for them. Then Eve answered, how can we do it? Then Adam said to her, we will join Abel's sister in marriage to Cain and Cain's sister to Abel. Then said Eve to Adam, I do not like Cain because he is hard hearted. But let them bide, let them bide until we offer up until the Lord, 
uh, excuse me, until we offer up unto the Lord in their behalf. And Adam said no more, right? Because Eve made a statement, she's righteous. She's saying, let's see, wait until we make our offering to the Lord and see basically what happens. So Eve doesn't reprove her at all. He doesn't say nothing because she's righteous. Meanwhile, Satan came to Cain in the figure of a man of the field and said to him, Behold, Adam and Eve have taken counsel together about the marriage of you two, and they have agreed to marry Abel's sister to thee and thy sister to him. No, they did not agree. He's lying. And what did, what did uh, Satan come in the figure of a man of the field? Esau. That's right. He's a hunter. That's right. And he's a liar. But if it but if it were not that I love thee, I would not have told thee this thing. Yet if thou wilt take my advice and hearken to me, I will bring thee on thy wedding day beautiful robes. That's right. Satan brings you these these dresses you wearing for your weddings. It's not of the Father. Gold and silver and plenty, and my relations will attend thee. Right. My relations will attend thee. You ever been to a wedding? Beautiful white dress, suits, if they're going to give you money. That's Satan. Those are not marriages before God. Just want to throw that in there. That isn't what this video is about. I have a whole video about it, but you have not been married before God. That's right. Teaching the end from the beginning. Then Cain, then Cain said with joy, where are thy relations? And Satan answered, my relations are in the garden in the north. That's right, his relations, those who are like him. Whether I once meant to bring thy father Adam, but he would not accept my offer. But thou, if thou wilt receive my words, and if thou wilt come unto me after thy wedding, thou shalt rest from the misery in which thou art, and thou shalt rest and be better off than thy father Adam. That's right, because Adam, he has to toil in the earth. Cain likes the world, though. At, at these words of Satan, Cain opened his ears and leaped towards his speech. And he did not remain in the field, but he went to Eve, his mother, and beat her. And cursed her and said to her, Why are ye about taking my sister to wed her to my brother? Am I dead? Right, so he's, he's hearkening to his speech, and it's a lie. That's what a lot of you people are doing out here. You're hearkening to Cain, the serpent. Doing crazy things over the lies he tells you. His mother, however, quieted him and sent him to the field where he had been, where where he had been, excuse me. Then when Adam came, she told him what Cain had done. But Adam grieved and held his peace and said not a word. Then on the morrow, Adam said unto Cain, his son, take of thy sheep young and good and offer them up unto thy God. And I will speak to thy brother to make unto his God an offering of corn. They both hearkened to their father, Adam, and they took their offerings and offered them up on the mountain by the altar. But Cain behaved haughtily towards his brother, very proud, and thrust him from the altar and would not let him offer up his gift upon the altar, but he offered, a, offered his own upon it with a proud heart full of guile and fraud. That's right. They're proud people, bullies, those who are like Cain. That's right. Abel and Cain were born again through Jacob, excuse me, through Isaac with Jacob and Esau. Jacob is Abel, Esau is Cain. We're going to get it. You're going to see. I used to watch this as a kid. I remember I lived with my grandmother, and uh, she lived in a predominantly uh, European neighborhood, and I would go to the school. And I would see like different cultures. They would eat lunch, and the children of Cain would be very proud and bullying these people because of their food. It was different. Like if they're from Asia or different cultures, I'd watch that. They're proud. Never trust Cain. Let's read. Their heart is evil. They hearken to the world. They have power, so they're proud. But as for Abel, he set up stones that were near at hand, and upon that he offered up his gift with a heart humble and free from guile, just like Jacob. That's right. <laughs> Teaching the end from the beginning.
You got to understand it from the beginning. Cain was then standing by the altar in which he had offered up his gift, and he cried unto God to accept his offering. But God did not accept it from him, neither did the divine fire come down to consume his offering. But he remained standing over against the altar out of humor and out of humor and wrath, looking towards his brother Abel to see if God would accept his offering or not. And Abel prayed unto God to accept his offering. Then a divine fire came down and consumed his offering, and God smelled the sweet savor of his offering because Abel loved him and rejoiced in him. Like, because Abel loved God and rejoiced in the word of God. Sweet savor of his offering. Pay attention to that. And because God was well pleased with him, he sent him an angel of light and the figure of man who had partaken of his offering. Right. Because he had smelled the sweet savor of his offering and they comforted Abel and strengthened his heart. Right. How does, how does man get the word of God? By an angel. And they comfort Abel. The word of God, the comforter. It comes to the men who the Lord has chose. And you must hearken to them. It's comfort because being a Hebrew on this earth right now, you need to be comforted because you, it's about patience and time. You have to wait to watch all these things happen. So they're comforting Abel. You're worthy of the father. Let's read. But Cain was looking at all that took place at his brother's offering and was wroth on account of it. Right. They don't like that the, the Lord is dealing with Abel. Then he opened his mouth and blasphemed God because he had not accepted his offering. But God said unto Cain, wherefore is thy countenance sad? Be righteous that I may accept thy offering. Not against me has thou murmured, but against thyself. Right. So Cain has an option. So for all these Israelites out here, I'm going to be very clear. If you are condemning an Edomite who you don't know, even your Lord did not condemn Cain. He told him what to do. Be righteous. Job was perfect in the eyes of God, and he was an Edomite. So that's the importance of knowing the word from the beginning. If you don't, you're going to be making drastic errors in your judgment. And you might be the one getting condemned. Let's read. You haven't, you haven't cursed God. <laughs> you, you're bringing it against yourself by being against this. And, God's, and God said this to Cain in rebuke. And because he abhorred him and his offering, right, because Cain is not righteous. I don't want your offering. I don't like you. So when people say the Lord does not hate or not like something, that's false. He didn't like Cain because of his heart. Cain as an individual, his heart was not for God. He hearkened to Satan. And Cain, and Cain came down from the altar, his color changed, and of a woeful countenance, and came to his father and mother and told them all that had befallen him. And Adam grieved much because God had not accepted Cain's offering. Right, so uh, Cain had lost his color. Who did that happen to before in the Bible? Miriam, Miriam. She lost she, the curse of leprosy because she was not obedient. She didn't listen to the servant of God who was Moses. They were speaking against Moses and his wife, who the father gave him. You didn't, and the Lord spoke with Moses face to face because it says, uh, I'm just going to paraphrase. If a prophet be among you, I will come to that prophet in a vision or a dream. But Moses is not like that. I spoke to him face to face. So you're going to be against Moses? He cursed her, removed her pigment. So that was played out again in the earth. Jacob and Esau, he was bored red all over. Let's read. And Abel came down rejoicing and with a gladsome heart and told his father and mother how God had accepted his offering. And they rejoiced at it and kissed his face. And Abel said to his father, because Cain thrust me from the altar and would not allow me to offer my gift upon it. I made an altar for myself and offered my gift upon it. 
Right, just like Jacob did. Let's read. But when Adam heard this, he was very sorry because it was the altar he had built at first and upon which he had offered his own gifts. Right. That's like, it's basically what they've done to you Israelites. They've thrust you from the altar. The truth. That's right. As to Cain, he was so sullen and so angry that he went into the field where Satan came and came to him and said to him, Since thy brother Abel has taken refuge with thy father Adam, because thou didst thrust him from the altar, they have kissed his face and they rejoice over him far more than over thee. It's not, that's not what's going on. When Cain heard these words of Satan, he was filled with rage and he let no one know, but he was lying. He was laying wait to kill his brother. That's right. Never trust Cain. Never trust him. Never. Never turn your back to Cain. Never. He's a murderer. Until he brought him to the cave. And, until he brought him into the cave and then said to him, Oh, brother, the country is so beautiful, and there are such beautiful and pleasurable trees in it, and charming to look at. But, brother, thou hast never been one day in the field to take thy pleasure therein. Right. He wants to draw him out to have fun. Today, oh, my brother, I very much wish thou wouldest come with me into the field to enjoy thyself and to bless our fields and our flocks, for thou art righteous, and I love thee much, oh, my brother. That's right. But thou hast estranged thyself from me. Right. Oh, my brother. It, that's what they do. They say that those who have the spirit of Satan, they start trying to attach themselves to you in some way. Let's read. Then Abel consented to go with his brother Cain into the field. But before going out, Cain said to Abel, wait for me until I fetch a staff because of wild beasts. Right. He's acting like he's going to protect you. Abel, Israel, you keep hearkening to the serpent. Then Abel stood waiting in his innocence, but Cain, the forward, fetched a staff and went out. And they began, Cain and his brother Abel, to walk in the way, Cain talking to him and comforting him to make him forget everything. Right. That's what they do to you Israelites today. They don't want to talk about critical race theory, right? They want you to forget everything that's been done. Good old Cain. That's right. They want you to forget slavery. And they want to make you think it never happened now. You got people out there saying, oh, that never happened. That's Cain. The Lord doesn't forget nothing. Let's read. Chapter 79. And so they went on until they came to a lonely place where there was no sheep. That's right. You were lonely in America. There were no sheep here. Then Abel said to Cain, Behold, my brother, we are weary of walking, for we see none of the trees, nor of the fruits, nor of the verdure, nor of the sheep, nor of any one of the things of which thou didst tell me. That's right. They tricked you. A lot of you Israelites were tricked to get on those ships to come to America. Cain, serpent, Satan and his hosts, they tricked you. Three. They had, they, all those people had the spirit of Cain on them. Murderers. Where are those sheep of thine thou didst tell me to bless? Then Cain said to him, Come on, and presently thou shalt see many beautiful things, but go before me until I come up to thee. Then Abel went forward, but Cain remained behind him. And Abel was walking in his innocence without guile, not believing his brother would kill him. Then Cain, when he came up to him, comforted him with his talk. You keep hearkening to the serpent, you Israelites. His words are smooth as oil. Walking a little behind him, then he hastened and smote him with the staff, blow upon blow, until he was stunned. When Abel fell down upon the ground, seeing that his brother meant to kill him, he said to Cain, O oh, my brother, have pity on me. By thy breast we have sucked, smite me not. By the womb that bare us and that brought us into the world, smite me not unto death. With that staff, if thou wilt kill me, 
Take one of these large stones and kill me outright. Soldier. If you're going to kill me, just do it. Abel knows where he's going. He's comforted. Cain, he's not going to be in comfort. Then Cain, the hard-hearted and cruel murderer, took a large stone and smote his brother with it upon the head until his brains oozed out and he weltered in his blood before him. And Cain repented not of what he had done. Right, they haven't repented of what happened to you Israelites here. The wicked. The wicked of Cain. That's right. But the earth, when the blood of the righteous Abel fell upon it, trembled as it drank his blood and would have brought Cain to not for it. And the blood of Abel cried mysteriously to God. That's right. Mysteriously, because he's righteous. So the righteous blood cries up to the Lord to avenge him of his murderer. Then Cain began at once to dig the earth wherein to lay his brother, for he was trembling from the fear that came upon him. That's right. They're always afraid of nuclear weapons and what other nation has nukes. They're always afraid. You walk down the street, they got a purse. They're nervous. Fear, because they're guilty. Let's read. When he saw the earth tremble on his account, he then cast his brother into the pit he made and covered him with dust. But the earth would not receive him, but it threw him up at once. Again did Cain dig the earth and hid his brother in it, but again did the earth throw him up on itself, until three times did the earth thus throw up on itself the body of Abel. The muddy earth threw him up the first time because he was not the first creation. And it threw him up the second time, it would not receive him because he was righteous and good and was killed without a cause. Right? You ever find out those people who be getting murdered and their body just happens to pop up again? And the earth threw him up the third time, it would not receive him. But there might remain before his brother a witness against him. That's right. So recently you've been seeing these things where these uh, indigenous Indian schools in Canada, they found all these bodies. It was dug up, right? It's a witness against them. Cain. But you, a lot of our people, you just keep sleeping out here, right? I think there's some down south that has something to do with some school or some where they had Israelites in the school and there was 200 or something bodies there. They dug those bodies up. It's a witness against Cain. Let's read. And so did the earth mock Cain until the word of God came to him concerning his brother. Then was God angry and much displeased at Abel's death. And he thundered from heaven and lightnings went before him. And the word of the Lord God came from heaven to Cain and said unto him, Where is Abel thy brother? Then Cain answered with a proud heart and a gruff voice, How, O God, am I my brother's keeper? Then God said unto Cain, Cursed be the earth that has drunk the blood of Abel thy brother, and thou, be thou trembling and shaking. That's right, they're always nervous. 900 billion for a military. They're always afraid. The terrorist is always afraid of the terrorist. <laughs> and this will be a sign unto thee that whoever, shall, whoever finds thee shall kill thee. But Cain wept because God had said those words to him. And Cain said unto him, O God, whoever finds me shall kill me, and I shall be blotted out from the face of the earth. And God said unto Cain, Whosoever shall find thee shall not kill thee. Because before this, God had been saying to Cain, I shall forego seven punishments on him who kills Cain. For as to the word of God to Cain, where is thy brother? God said, in, in, said it in mercy for him to try and make him repent. He's supposed to just admit what he did. For if Cain had repented at that time and had said, O oh God, forgive me my sin and the murder of my brother, God would have forgiven him his sin, but he was proud instead. And as to God saying to Cain, Cursed be the ground that thou hast drunk the blood of thy brother. That also was God's mercy on Cain. For God did not curse him, but he cursed the ground, although it was not the ground that had killed Abel and had committed iniquity. For it was meet that the curse should fall upon the murderer, yet in mercy did God so manage his thoughts as that no one should know it and turn away from Cain. Right. The Lord showing mercy to Cain. 
And he said to him, Where is thy brother? To which he answered and said, I know not. Then the creator said to him, Be trembling and quaking. Since he was proud, you're going to be nervous forever on the earth. Then Cain trembled and became terrified, and through this, through this sign did God make him an example before all creation as the murderer of his brother. Who they show you on TV hanging who on trees? He put it on the top of a rock, right? He sees you killing your brother, Cain, Esau. Let's read. Also did God bring trembling and terror upon him that he might see the peace in which he was at first and see also the trembling and terror he endured at the last so that he might humble himself before God and repent of his sin and seek the peace he enjoyed at first. Right, so they can repent. You're either going to repent or you're going to be in trembling fear because when it comes at the last judgment, you're going to be terrified. And in, in the word of God that said, I will forego seven punishments on whomsoever, whom, whomsoever kills Cain. God was not seeking to kill Cain with the sword, but he thought to make him die of fasting and praying and weeping by hard rule, servitude, making him be a worshiper of God. <laughs> Until the time he was delivered from his sin and the seven punishments of the seven generations during which God awaited Cain for the murder of his brother. But as to Cain, ever since he had killed his brother, he could not find no rest in any place, but went back to Adam and Eve trembling, terrified, and defiled with blood. That's right. They're always nervous. Second book of Adam and Eve, chapter 1. When Lulawa heard Cain's words, she wept and went to her father and mother and told them how that Cain had killed his brother Abel. Then they all cried aloud and lifted up their voices and slapped their faces and threw dust upon their heads. That's where that comes from. And rent asunder their garments and went out at the out and came to the place where Abel was killed. And they found him lying on the earth, killed, and beasts around him, while they wept and cried because of this just one. From his body, by reason of its purity, went forth the smell of sweet spices. And Adam carried him, his tears streaming down his face, and went to the cave of treasures where he laid him, and wound him up with sweet spices and myrrh. And Adam and Eve continued by the burial of him in the great grief a hundred and forty days. Abel was fifteen and a half years old, and Cain seventeen years and a half. As for Cain, when the mourning for his brother was ended, he took his sister Lulawa and married her without leave from his father and mother for they cannot keep him from her by reason of their heavy heart. He then went down to the bottom of the mountain, away from the garden near to the place where he had killed his brother. And in that place were many fruit trees and forest trees, his sister bare him children, who in their turn began to multiply by degrees until they filled that place. But as for Adam and Eve, and they came not to get together after Abel's funeral for seven years. After this, however, Eve conceived, and while she was with child, Adam said to her, Come, let us take an offering and offer it up unto God, and ask him to give us a fair child, in whom we may find comfort, and whom we may find who we may join in marriage to Abel's sister. Then they prepared an offering and brought it up to the altar, and they offered it before the Lord, and began to entreat him to accept their offering, and gave them a good offspring. And God heard Adam and accepted his offering. They then worshiped Adam, Eve, and their daughter. And came down to the cave of treasure and placed a lamp in it to burn by night and by day before the body of Abel. That's right. Then Adam and Eve continued fasting and praying until Eve's time came that she should be delivered. When she said to Adam, I wish to go to the cave in the rock and to bring forth in it. And he said, Go and take with thee thy daughter to wait on thee, but I will remain in this cave of treasures before the body of my son Abel. Then Eve hearkened to Adam and went. She and her daughter, but Adam remained by himself in the cave of treasures. That's right. That's why you got the menorah in the holy place and next to the uh, where they burn the incense in front of the, the curtain. Um, thank, uh, this is going to be part one. Be on the lookout for part two. And uh, shalom.